right? You understand that? Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Aloha and welcome inside the Red Zone. Kevin Bowling are alongside the big kahuna of UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez after a huge win in Hawaii last night. And we've talked so much about this program moving forward. you got to learn to close the deal. Yeah. Last night you guys closed the deal. We did. It was great to see. You know, we've had a lot of those fourth quarter opportunities and uh, you know, to close that one out on the road, a place we haven't won in a long time. Now, that was a special deal, so really happy for the boys and everybody in the organization and the fans. I mean, it was great to get that win and, you know, get everybody excited. Let's uh, get right to the highlights because there are a lot of them. We're going to start with the first half where it was clear the scoreboard operator would be a busy man. We know why we came here, right? We understand that? Yes, sir. So then do we understand the work that we need to put in right now? Yes, sir. We understand that? Yes, sir. the toughest and most physical things that I went tonight. We know what we're in for tonight. They don't know what they're in for yet. Though. I want to see you let your hair down and play like you're on fire. Don't be afraid to risk it all. Risk it all now, you hear me? Plenty of aloha spirit as UNLV and Hawaii tangled. It was the Rainbow Warriors who got the first crack of the ball and returned the opening kickoff all the way to the Rebel 25. On third and 11th at the 26, quarterback Drew Brown gets pressure. He starts moving backwards. Jeremiah Valawonga makes him pay. The sack puts Hawaii out of field goal range and they were forced to punt. The Rebels were forced to punt after their first possession and Evan Pantels delivers a beauty, pinning Hawaii at their own three. The defense held and the Rebels had flipped the field. Dalton Sneed led UNLV down the field. It was 39 at the Hawaii 38. Sneed gets flushed out of the pocket and decides to hoof it, rolling 20 yards all the way to the 18. Lexington Thomas had two big runs to put the Rebels on the doorstep. Then Sneed hits Devontae Boyd on a quick slant for the touchdown. It was 7-0 UNLV. Hawaii came right back. Deal Simi St. Just gets the inside handoff, cuts outside, and he has a lot of daylight going all the way down to the three. Two plays later, Steven Lakalaka -Laka finishes the drive. We were tied at seven. Kurt Palandak would start the next series for UNLV, but it went nowhere and included a fumble pitch on the option. After a punt, Hawaii drove down and took the lead as Brown threw to tight end Dakota Torres for the score to make it 14-7. Steve came back out and led UNLV on a 91-yard drive capped by Thomas in motion, getting the ball in stride, and he's going 37 yards for the touchdown. We were tied at 14. The seesaw continued. Brown goes downfield to Marcus Kemp, who gets away with a push, and he gets the grab at the one. Laka Laka went over the top to give Hawaii the lead back. UNLV had 2.22 on the clock. Thomas starts the drive with a 10-yard run. Then Sneed hits Boyd for a first down at midfield. The toss to Andrew Price nets 35 yards, down to the 15 with 92 seconds left in the half. On third and fourth to six, Sneed lowers his shoulder and gets the first down at the three. David Green would get the rock at the one, and the captain does his thing, lowering his shoulder for six. After 30 minutes of football, UNLV and Hawaii were tied at 21. 
In this first half, we saw the balance on offense that I know that you guys have been striving to get in terms of run pass, and it seemed to be really effective for you guys. Yeah, you know, we learned a lot about ourselves, you know, a week ago. I mean, there's some things we needed to correct, you know, settle the quarterback position down, and uh, I thought Dalton did a really good job of, of stepping up into the pocket when there was pressure, took a lot of hits and still delivered balls, and we got back to running the football when we were capable of doing so. Um, it was a good first half in a lot of ways, and to be able to execute that two-minute drive at the end of both halves were really the difference in the game, so that was a big deal. I know you wanted to get Palandek in the game, and I assume it's a scheduled thing that you had him coming in on a third series, but Dalton Sneed had just led the team down the field in the second series. Was there a thought process that maybe we stay with the hot hand? Or was it important to get Palandek a couple of steps? It was important to get him in. I mean, it was something we had talked about all week, you know, and, and you know, we just felt like, hey, third series, that's his series, and we never, we didn't even think about it. We just, we put him right in, and he actually didn't do that bad a job. We blocked the option guy on that, on that one pitch, and then Charles drops the pitch. So, unfortunately for him, you know, he got put a little off schedule, and, you know, it really wasn't any fault of his own. So, but Dalton did have the hot hand, and that's why he kept going. The offense put up 21 points. You knew this was going to be a shootout. What was the message when you went into the locker room at halftime? You know, it's the same thing we've been saying all year. Just stay the course. Keep doing what we're doing. Don't worry about it. I don't care what you get up by, what you get down by. Don't panic. Just keep playing every single snap. You know, keep playing hard in all three phases, and we'll find a way to win at the end. Well, let's go to the second half now where this turned into a typical UNLV Hawaii game. Wild, high scoring, and right down to the wire. Both offenses started a little sluggish in the second half, but midway through the third quarter, UNLV put together a 13-play, 81-yard drive that ended with an 18-yard Pantels field goal to give UNLV the lead back at 24-21. Brown used his feet to help Hawaii on the next possession, rushing for 20 yards and then getting a late hit flag, questionable at best. That led to a 24-yard field goal from Rigoberto Sanchez to tie it back up as we were headed to a wild fourth quarter. The Warriors went back out in front moments later. Brown swings it out to St. Just, who dives into the end zone. That would make it 31-24. The Rebels answered quickly. Sneed to Makai Stevenson for 12 yards on third down, and a roughing the passer call moved the ball to the Hawaii 40. On the next play, Sneed finds Tim Holt, who bolts to the one-yard line. That set up Green for a touchdown. We were knotted at 31. Rebels on defense. Darius Mouton gets the strip. Troy Hawthorne in the recovery, and it looked like UNLV was in business. But on review, it was determined that the Hawaii player touched the loose ball while out of bounds. The Warriors maintain possession. That allowed Paul Harris to score later in the drive to put Hawaii back in front 38-31 with 9.02 left. UNLV went 80 yards in 10 plays. Thomas puts on a show, willing his way into the end zone. It was 38 all with just five minutes to go. Hawaii had a third and three at their own 47. Brown rolls right. Hawaii native Tao Lota Lele strips the ball. Muta picks it up and he races for what appears to be a touchdown. But the officials call UNLV for an illegal block out of bounds. The Rebels kept the ball, but they had to start the drive at their own 45 with 2.56 left. Sneed hit Boyd and he worked his way down to the 14 yard line. With 49 seconds to go, Pantels lining up for a 28 yard field goal and it's right down Waikiki. UNLV had the lead, the defense shut the door on the Warriors. Another high scoring dramatic finish on Oahu and UNLV wins at Hawaii for the first time since 2000, 41 to 38, leading to a raucous celebration in the locker room afterwards. Let's start at the very end here because you get the turnover. You think you have a touchdown, but you have the penalty. So now you got to settle everybody down and, and work into to at least field goal range, if not get into the end zone. Yeah, it was kind of a crazy deal. Like one of their players was uh, he was standing on the white line, chasing him down the field. So one of our defensive guys peeled back to 
to block him, not realizing he was out of bounds. So it was kind of an interesting deal the way it turned out. But, you know, that's the whole thing, settling down. I thought they did a great job of collecting themselves after that, settling down, driving down in there. And then, you know, towards the end, we just kind of felt like if we could, you know, take some time off the clock, get them to, you know, use all their timeouts and put us in, a, in the best situation to, to, to win the game. And, and it did, you know. Tal making that play was huge. They'll get in that critical turnover, especially after the one we had lost, you know, in the previous series. So, um, that was a big, big deal, but I always say, you know, if you're going to win games, you know, great players got to make great plays, and that's what he did. Kickers often get overlooked. Evan Pantels, though, has done so many things for this team. His punting has been outstanding, and uh, a clutch field goal last night gets the win. He's been great. He's 100% he's on PATs for the year. He's 100% on field goals from the year. No bigger field goal than he made last night. You know, keeps dropping balls inside the 10. You know, only a sophomore. Um, he's got a great future ahead of him, and uh, he's doing a great job for us right now. When you talk about winning on the road, making sure if you fall behind that things don't snowball, it seems like UNLV last night answered every call throughout this game. Yeah, you know, I mean, really, it's just, you know, having that mindset that, you know, yeah, you're going to take it, you know, one play at a time, one series at a time, one quarter at a time, and our guys are doing a good job with that, you know. So they handled it well. I mean, Hawaii's a tough place, interesting place to play. You know, I mean, you saw the pictures early in the deal, the guys on the beach, and, you know, sometimes some guys believe, hey, get there Friday and be there less than 24 hours. Sometimes you tell them, you know, you can't go out. And our whole thing was on, on Friday afternoon, we, we gave them two hours. We said, go to the beach, get in the sand get in the water and then after that come back in let's refocus and still had 27 hours from kickoff so instead of them you know trying you know staring out the window wishing they were out there we gave them a little taste of it not too much but a little taste we're not done with this big win our entire <laughs> next segment is dedicated to what happened afterwards first the player interviews post game and then an exclusive look at the locker room celebration that was raucous and loud stay with us it's all in just two minutes as the red zone hangs loose on the back side of the brain You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. I'm speechless, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, to come to the island, uh, we haven't won here since 2000, is what one of the guys was telling us, and it feels great to get this team win, especially for all the guys on our team who are from here, coming back, playing in front of their family. It's just a great overall win for our team. We're always down in those situations, and sometimes when we're down in the situation, we don't come back in four quarters. So, man, it came through this time, and... Man, that was a, whew, that was a great game, great feeling. Can't explain it more. It's just mind blowing. Well, all week we preached on um, finishing the game, becoming a four quarter team, all, all through the front, from the first to the fourth, finishing the game. And we just came out here and closed out like, like coach just told us to. Well, after the game, it was a celebration reserved for big road wins as the Rebels were fired up. Moments like that afterwards, those are the things that you'll remember forever. Absolutely. I mean, it's great. There's so much hard work that gets put into this game. So, you know, you win a game like that and you see, you know, the elation afterwards. And it's just, you know, hey, this spoils a victory. So it was great. And uh, we got a good night's sleep on the, on the plane ride home and right back into the work. And the guys are in there lifting right now. Big picture wise, this game also <laughs> has implications. Hawaii is such a fertile recruiting ground and it's become so much more competitive. Pac-12 schools are going in there hot and heavy. Of course, you have Hawaii trying to keep guys home. You guys like to go over there. Getting a win on the island in front of a lot of people that's going to be talked about all week long on the islands, 
that's big for you guys down the road. It is big. You know, I mean, you get in a conference, you know, especially in the areas that you recruit heavily in, you know, it's important to go out there and look good and play well, you know, and uh, a lot of the guys we're recruiting were at that game and such, and uh, so it was good. I mean, you know, we're the ninth island. There's that little connection, and they're doing a great job over there. Coach Rolovich has got those guys going and playing hard, so we got our work cut out for us recruiting over there, so um, that was a really good night for us. We're going to take one more short break, and then we're going to start our look ahead to this Saturday as Colorado State rolls into Sam Boyd. That preview up next. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. The High Flying Rebels now return in front of the home crowd for a 2.30 Saturday kickoff against Colorado State. Colorado State has had a roller coaster season with losses where they were physically pushed around by Colorado and Wyoming. They had made a switch of quarterback from junior Nick Stevens to freshman Colin Hill, but Hill tore his ACL and is out for the season. Stevens is back at the controls. Stevens has been inconsistent, but last year he did show that he could lead the Rams to victories. Running back Jalen Dawkins has the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. And Colorado State will try to get him in space on the receiving end like San Diego State did with Danelle Pumphrey. Second year Ram head coach Mike Bobo says that he's been impressed with UNLV's progress and knows that it's a team that's going to play a full 60 minutes. You turn on every tape of them playing, which we did this offseason, you see a team that played hard and didn't quit. And I know he's proud of, proud of that. I, you know, that's the number one thing. You know, I tell guys all the time, you know, my wife don't know a, a good play from a bad play, but she can tell if somebody's not playing hard or, or if they're busting it for their university. After losing 26 seniors and star wide receiver Rashard Higgins, who left after last season for the NFL, CSU is still trying to find itself. The Rebels need to make sure that doesn't happen on Saturday. You come off a big win at Hawaii. If you don't back that up this week, it's diminished a little bit. Uh, you know what? We don't look at it like that. We just we keep working every you know one game at a time. You know we're, our whole thing, our goals. You know Colorado State. So 24 hours, we forget about what happened last week and we move on. So again, we try not to make it any bigger than it is for the guys. I mean, literally, it's four quarters of solid football against Colorado State. You go out there, play well, um, do the little things right, and go out and you know earn a victory. And then whatever happens from there, you move on from it. So again, it's just simplifying things for the guys and the way they approach it. I know you're just starting to look at Colorado State on tape, but what are some of the concerns maybe that are, that are red flagged already? Yeah, well, I mean, they're a program that traditionally wins a lot of games. You know, they've, they've uh, consistently gone to bowl games last bunch of years, so they have that little bit of tradition, um, and, and we're trying to, you know, create that within our program. So you look at them, and, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, um, this quarterback deal and how that plays out. You know, we, we obviously know Stevens, um, you know, a little bit, and, you know, they lost their, their guy that took over. And coming off an interesting game, they played boys who really tough last night and uh, we watched the game it was kind of a rainstorm like, you know got some on-site kicks so it's gonna be interesting to see you know how they respond but it's a big game for both of us I mean we have a great opportunity both programs to kind of elevate ourselves you know in conference play right now and again working towards bowl eligibility so it's a big game at home and it's a game you know we need to get a great crowd out too and we got to go out and we got to find a way to win that's a 2.30 kickoff. They are running some ticket specials out there for the families as well, so make sure that you get online and get those tickets for Saturday's game. We're going to come back with a special edition of the Plays of the Week, but as we go to break, here's a look at how other Mountain West teams did over the weekend. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Big news out of Carson City this week. The state legislature approved the funding plan for a new stadium, and the governor is going to sign that into law on Monday in Las Vegas. That's huge for UNLV because even if the NFL owners reject the Raiders moving, UNLV essentially has the rights and they're going to get a stadium one way or the other. Well, I'll tell you what, it's so exciting for the university and for this football program. You know, President Jessup's, you know, vision of being Tier 1, and this is a big, big move forward for that. You know, so with the Fertitta Football Complex, new stadium coming, you know, I think there's bright days ahead for the for the Rebels. We're looking forward to it. We're also looking forward to a big game at Sam Boyd, 2.30 on Saturday. We hope to see you out at the stadium and uh, get a big crowd to cheer on those Rebels who are trying to get things turned around. Of course, we'll be back here in the Red Zone next Sunday to break that one down as well. 
We're going to leave you with the Rebel Plays of the Week from a fun weekend on Oahu. Thanks for joining us in the Reb Zone, and aloha. Got a swagger like Jagger, big French palace, damn nice, tight. Clean like McQueen, two pinky rings, damn nice, brown. Moves like down, buys every round, what you have in the now. Got a car like Bond, lays on the arm. Get ready for the wildlife, yeah, been a long time coming. Old school Chevy with my windows down, huh. Spent a long time running, black shades on and my radio loud, yeah. Damn feel so good, roam through my old hood, how's that sound? It sound like what? Okay, yeah. So you ready for the night? Yeah. The flashing lights? Yeah. You gonna lose your mind? Yeah. Well, I already lost mine. Woo. So you ready for the night? Yeah. And don't it feel nice yeah. to lose your mind? Get ready for the wildlife. Woo. Swagger like Jagger, big French palace, damn nice tie. Clean like McQueen, two pinky rings, damn nice bride. Moves like brown, buys every round, what you have in the night. Got a car like Bone, ladies on the arm, get ready for the wildlife. Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie, your home, your way.